Welcome to the Legally Speaking Podcast. I'm your host, Rob Hanna. This week, I'm delighted to be joined by Frederick Penny. Frederick is the CEO and founder of law firm Penny & Associates. He is the highest AVEO rated personal injury attorney, featuring in Forbes and a true entrepreneur. He has experience handling high profile cases about product liability. Frederick is appointed as a settlement conference judge to the Placia County Superior Court and is a member of the United States Supreme Court Bar. So a very, very warm welcome, Frederick. How are you doing, Rob? Appreciate it. Uh, it's an absolute pleasure having you on the show. And before we dive into all your amazing achievements to date, we do have a customary icebreaker question here on the Legally Speaking podcast, which is on the scale of one to 10, 10 being very real, what would you rate the hit TV series Suits in terms of its reality? The answer is, I have no idea. I don't want to. <laughs> With that, we're going to give it a zero and we're going to move swiftly on. So zero. if... I'm going to... No, I want to, I want to comment. Of can course comment you can. Of course problem? you can. So I'm the kind of guy, it's very interesting. People ask me about all these law and legal shows. I don't watch any of them. I haven't watched a law legal show in 34 years, to my knowledge. When OJ Simpson was going on, Way back when, hey, would you know what's going on? I don't have time to watch O.J. Simpson, what's going on. I'm too busy working on the existing cases I'm working on. So I never watch those. So people always ask me, what do you think? Do you watch this? This is a great one on HBO and Netflix. (laughs) (laughs) You're, 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 I, I, I deal with the law so much. Why would I want to do that? Bring that at home. Exactly. And you're doing the real stuff. And uh, we're definitely going to dive into that in today's discussion. But let's start at the beginning, Frederick. Why don't you mind telling our listeners a bit about your background and your career journey? Sure. Uh, I grew up on a small farm in Northern California. Everyone's like, oh, you're from California. Hollywood? No, I was completely opposite <laughs> part of Hollywood. That's Southern California. <laughs> I was up north on a little farm. I'm going to say country boy. Uh, we there's, I believe 650 was the population when I was young there. And uh, my father was a retired police officer and a, and a gen- I'm going to say a gentleman farmer. And uh, we, we lived humbly. You know, we weren't, uh, we, we, we had food on the table, but we struggled a little bit at the end of the month. And that's the way I grew up. And I started when I was 14 picking peaches at the local uh, fruit farm. And I, uh, that's what I did up until I was probably 18. I worked in, a, in a, uh, the local grocery store briefly. And I'm talking grocery store that's probably, <clears throat> you know, 1,500 square feet, right? <laughs> not, not a mega grocery store. And um, so I learned at an early age to work hard. Right. At an early age, when I was 14, <clears throat> I loved football. I played basketball in high school, but my dad said, you don't play football because during the summertime is when you have to practice. Right. And he said, no, we work during the summer and you make money to help the family and help yourself. So I, uh, I worked really hard. I worked a lot of hours, started when I was, I, I worked started when I was a little kid, nine years old, eight years old, you know, at the little country in our little, uh, I'm going to say it, a, a country little farm. Um, but, uh, at 14, I was out working at a, at a, the Vegas fruit ranch picking peaches. And, uh, that's what, it's kind of funny because we're, we're writing to jump ahead. We're writing a book, a book's coming out probably next month. It looks like it's going to come out. Um, and basically the theme is from picking peaches to private chat. And that's kind of how it's my whole life has kind of evolved is from picking peaches to private jet. So I went ahead and, and, and to jump, went to law school. <clears throat> I was never the smartest kid. I was always in the middle. Everything I did in school, I was dead in the middle, Robert. I was not one of those stellar, you know, I was the best, you know, brief writer or whatever that, but I think I had street smarts. So I like taking those people on in court, right? And because I think I've got the street smarts where they've got the book smarts. Um, so everyone did, uh, I, I did this thing that everybody didn't believe I could do, right? When I passed my bar in 90, 1992, my brother was a prosecutor in uh, the state of California. He was a well-known individual, and he's, by the way, now a judge. And um, he said, you know what? You've got the skills and you got the personality to go start on your own. And everyone's like, how do you start on your own? You have no experience. So I started right on my own, went to the biggest law firm in the United States, and I knew one of the partners that ran the California, Northern California division. And I said, 
send me your crummy cases that you don't you don't want to take to court or you don't even want and I'll handle them and, and, and we'll make an agreement, uh, you know, a, a legal ethical agreement, right? Of who gets paid what. And Rob, I started trying cases within the first year. I mean, I went against a government entity and sued the government my first year of practice, right? But guess what? It was a bad case and they didn't want it. So, you know, so I won some, lost some, and I started hitting uh, a few verdicts uh, and uh, it just it launched from that. So inspiring, Frederick. Absolutely inspiring how you, how you did that. And, you know, just the, the courage and just how you went about making that happen is, is truly amazing. But, you know, as a personal injury attorney, you know, what types of cases do you deal with? Sure. First of all, I didn't want to be a personal injury lawyer. I, I never wanted to be a personal <laughs> injury lawyer. But it was, I, I worked for a very short time in a big, big, big firm down in Southern California. I mean, in, uh, the Bay Area near San Francisco. I'll just say that because there's people all over the world listening, but um, close to San Francisco. And they didn't have any work in that division. And they put me in the personal injury defense. <clears throat> and I was a law clerk at the time. I wasn't even past my bar yet. <clears throat> and so I sat there and worked on personal injury defense where I represent the insurance companies. And and then I, I got my first job before I passed my bar um, <clears throat> from another personal injury plaintiff. And I just went, that's a pretty good gig, and that's what I learned, and and that's and that's how I started um, uh, uh, that type of an area of law, and that's what I did, and that's why I did that. I didn't want to be, but the type of cases we do, look, Penny and Associates. I started Penny and Associates. You know, started with Frederick Penny, uh, law firm of Frederick Penny, way back when. Jesus, over thirty years now. Um, I we would just do auto truck accidents, just the standard personal injury. We do do big plane accidents, helicopter accidents. A lot of high-profile bus accidents, train accidents, um, and some of the more high-profile cases we handle in California. And then I do have, and we can talk about later, another national firm that's in 46 states that we partner up with other lawyers in 46 states. So that's the big one. Yeah, and it's amazing what you've been involved with and what you've done. And talking of cases, you know, is there one that's most memorable to you, your most memorable case? Yeah, and my first one was super memorable, and I'll tell you why. My first one was about a snowplow and an auto accident, and a car and a snowplow hit each other. The snowplow was parked. It was dead of winter, way up in the mountains, and it had stalled out on the road, and it was sitting there in the road. But this is a country area. It was like in the middle of nowhere, right? And these individuals, uh, 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 husband and wife, were driving and, and, and ran into it, even though it had the reflectors on it and everything. And so we sued the county and um, I had maybe been un- practicing eight months. And this is where that big mega firm that said, good luck in winning this. You're not going to win this. Here you go. So I took it to trial and I had a mentor friend take one of the other people. There was another two people involved in the accident and I, I learned from him, but it was a bad <laughs> case. I mean, it was terrible. And I, everyone always remembers, I'm going to tell you this big victory, Rob. Look at I made billions of dollars. You know, no, I'd like to talk about the losses because you can learn from those, right? And and every lawyer, I love the lawyers that are out there saying, yeah, I never lose a case. Well, you've never taken a case to trial then. <laughs> you've only taken the tough cases, right? Take the tough cases to trial and we'll see what you're like, yeah. right? And and so um, <clears throat> the, the the most interesting part, I will never forget, uh, I, I put my, my client up on the stands, sat down, and in the, in the States, you have to tell them via what's called form interrogatories or special interrogatories, you have to tell them if there's any prior convictions you've had, right? And the answer was no. And I, Okay, no. Well, on cross-examination, they walked up and said, now isn't it, cross uh, defense counsel, isn't it true that you were recently in jail for for theft? And and she, she's like, no, no, I don't remember that. In fact, here, and then they brought in all their the documentation. In fact, you were in jail for stealing from this county, breaking into the fence and stealing stuff from this county that you're in. Uh, yeah, I do remember that now. Yeah, that was only a couple of years ago, right? Yeah, I do. And Rob, I was sitting there going, I love it. <laughs> The game is over. It's over. And then the best part is, so we go through it and, and we lost. We lost the case. The jury didn't like my clients at all. We lost. And to make a long story short, as we're driving away, they stopped me on the side of the road. They honked and pulled me over. 
And and she walked up to me at my door because we talked to him briefly and we said, okay, we'll talk to you later. And um, she goes, did you lose? <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't a big case. I mean, it probably was worth all of $10,000, but uh, – but Bezar, did we lose? <laughs> yeah, you didn't tell me about being convicted for, for that either. So that's my that's my most memorable case. The big ones and the good ones, and that are not just me, my partners. We do uh, th- those are memorable. But you can't, I'll never. Uh, I love that story, Frederick. That's probably one of my best stories yeah. on the show we've had. I absolutely love it. Yeah. So it's definitely gonna be. A- yeah, you got to tell the fun losses, Absolutely. right? Absolutely, but there's, there's, a, there's a good hidden message in there that you know your 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 losses are your learnings, you know, and you you learn from them, you move on, and to be a, you know a highly skilled professional in anything, not just the law, you know, you have to take some beats, you know. And you mentioned also you touched on mentors there, you touched on so I know you probably had a good network of people around you, and you know you've had a super successful career, and I'm just so excited to have you on the show. So I want to talk because I mentioned in the introduction as well as a settlement conference judge to the placer. County Superior Court. Would you mind explaining more about your your role? Okay, that just I'm going to tell you because you're you're in uh, you're across the pond. That is nothing. That's nothing major. That's that's not a big deal. The big the big issues are. I'll be honest with you. There is a uh, super lawyer, Northern California super lawyer for many years. I've been, uh, but but that's just I, the the court has come to me. And they come to a number of ju- number of well-known lawyers or lawyers that, that, that can help and say, we need you to set up when we're behind to be a settlement conference judge and take these big cases. And they bring me in as the settlement conference judge to do that. And that's, you know, that's, that's super. And that's, that's helping the community. Right. But accolades wise, that's not, I'm just being straight up on it. That's not the biggest accolade I've ever had. Um, I'll tell you what my biggest accolade is. that I want to talk about it. You go for it, Frederick. You go for it. So the biggest accolade I think I have is is the people that I've hired. So what I've done through my law practice is realized <clears throat> that I can't do everything, right? The lawyers that think they can do everything will never, never make it where they want to be, right? The reason is because there's only so many hours in a day. So I figured the best way to become a successful law firm and grow is to hire the best people. So I did this, and this is a little bit different than most, and some have tried to copy me, and they are still, is I went to the insurance companies, Rob, and the top insurance companies, and found their best lawyers and hired them. Because I knew the most difficult ones to beat and the most powerful lawyers, a lot of them are working for the insurance industry. So I grabbed them, they became partners, and we've been doing that for 30 years. That's what I've been doing for uh, maybe 28 years, been hiring like that. And it's worked. And so my lawyers, my partners are better trial lawyers than me, Rob. I don't want someone that is as good as me or not quite as good as me. I want someone that's better than me because that's what builds your practice and makes you better, right? So my partners are superstar trial lawyers, superstars, in my opinion. And, and not only that, they're, they're very well known. Uh, in California and even one of, one of my partners throughout the United States. That's just my California division, not including the national division that I work with. Yeah. And, and tell us more right. about that because the firm has, you know, offices everywhere, pretty much, you know, Sacramento, Santa Clara, the list goes on. You have offices in San Diego, right. Southern California, San Francisco, Sunnyvale, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, you talked about how, and I completely agree with you, you know, hire people better than you, you know, why, why hire people and tell them what to do, hire people and they tell you what to do. Right. And you get inspired and you get those learnings. Right. And right. absolutely, I agree 100% with that. Um, you know, how did you go about expanding across different states. So was that part of the strategy as well? Just sort of sticking with that. Was there any other parts to the, to the parcel? No, there was not. That was not a strategy. It came, it came to be, which is interesting. People, did you, did you mean to be this big? No, I did not, Rob. I just, I, I just moved forward and built and built and built. So Cal, our, our, our division in California is called Penny and Associates. That's the one I founded, Penny and Associates. We have offices throughout the state of California, um, but there are a few more satellite offices we're in Chico, Sacramento, Rockland, Roseville. And why am I Rockland, Roseville, Sacramento? That's the Sacramento and hubs. We're in the real estate business. We buy our, a lot of times our own buildings. And when we get out expand, we move our lawyers to other buildings, right? And, and we, believe it or not, I'm in the real estate business too. My entrepreneurial part, right? I don't like paying rent to people. So I pay rent to myself. And then down in Southern California, we're down in Irvine and down on Santa Clara, right by the 49er football American football stadium, right? 
And but what I've done is is the lawyers in our firm in the California division can live wherever they want because they can we do things a lot of Zoom and then we have our own as we'll probably talk about later we have our own private jet and and I think that's the only way you can get not only the best way to get the top trial lawyers is live where you want and the the company jet will fly you to your cases and by the way we don't charge everything's oh that's a charge of the client if we have to fly for a client's case. Whatever Southwest, Delta, or United airline, not first class, coach is, that's what we charge, even if we take the jet, right? So um, that's how I built Penny and Associates. Then, to make a long story short, I got involved in the national uh, legal services, and I, I help a lot of the national legal services out with their cases. And then I, that's why I had to start opening. I opened in Arizona first. So I went, uh, well, I went to... Uh, I was California, then I'd open in Arizona, Utah, and then we opened in in, in uh, Austin, Texas, then Orlando, Florida, and then, you know, then out Seattle area. So we've just expanded from there. And that's Penny Galbraith Elder Brannon. That's that from no website, Rob, completely opposite of Penny and Associates that we market the heck out of. We do not market Penny Galbraith Elder Brannon um, because our partners market it under their individual names, not my name. Yeah, right? and I, I love that because I I, I can just see the the entrepreneur meets the legal meets the whole commercial you know mind that you have, and it's just incredible. And I think because you kind of moved into entrepreneurship so earlier, I think that's given you the advantage, you know, and that's why you have been so so successful because you have to go and figure it out, right? You know, that's that you're not surrounded in a firm full of tons of other people. You've just got to go and figure it out, and it's amazing what you have achieved and you've taken on some of the largest firms in the US to trial. You know, it's, it's incredible. Time for a quick break from the show. Are you a legal aid practitioner in England and Wales specializing in civil or criminal legal aid matters? If you are, this message is for you. As a legal aid solicitor, you don't have time to waste on legal aid case management software that doesn't work to your needs. That's why Clio has developed a quicker, more accurate and affordable solution for legal aid solicitors in England and Wales. It could save you hours in your month, particularly when it comes to end of month invoicing and claims to the legal aid agency. To see how it all works, visit clio.com forward slash UK forward slash legal aid. That's Clio, C-L-I-O dot com forward slash UK forward slash legal aid. Now back to the show. What experiences did you gain from these cases and how did they contribute to your overall successful career? Sure. So a couple of things. The first thing is I think my, my partners have gone against bigger ones than I've gone against. But the big, there's a lot of the big firms are out of San Francisco and Los Angeles, right? And, and, and even some out of Sacramento, they're, they're like a sub, it's the main firms are in San Francisco or LA, but in California, there's big firms, right? It's like Chicago, New York. Um, and, and how I did it early on is I was, let me just put it this way. <clears throat> I was not as smart as them, but I think I had more charisma and more street smarts. And that's how I'd win cases. I remember, oh, shoot, 22, 24 years ago. I don't even remember the name of the case. I don't even remember the lawyer. I remember what he looked like. He was an older guy, and I beat him in this trial. <clears throat> and um, the, the basically the juror said this. In, in essence, sir, the other individual, you're really smart, but you kind of spoke as if you were, you know, from one of the top law schools of the top countries. Fred, you're just like the guy next door. And you made it easy and simple and nice and understandable. And you're just like one of us. And that's why I think I went, right? That's why early on I'd won some cases. So, uh, but my partners have, have taken on the biggest, the one we just recently uh, finished with Lyft. And you just look up Frederick Penny, my name, and Lyft all over the internet. It's all over the internet of the case we hit. And and, and believe it or not, the number wasn't as big as, as but it's what we did with, um, in the States, there's been a big issue whether or not Lyft and Uber are individual independent contractors yep. or whether they're, they're employees. And so we got them to agree, the courts, that they were ostensible agents or as, as if to say employees. And so we broke open the amount of money that you can only get from the Lyft drivers when there's an accident. We broke it open into Lyft and they had to pay out. 
So that was huge nationwide, huge. So that was just, I think, three or four months ago. We just hit that one. So there's a lot of those. You just look up my name or look up our firm and you're going to find them on the internet. But <clears throat> I'm going to give kudos to my partners. They're hitting bigger cases than I ever hit by far and um, doing better than I ever did by far. And, but you know what? They're in the trenches. And you know what they say to me? Fred, just stay away from a case. Not that I'm stupid, but they said, we lose money unless you're out there shaking hands. So go out and do your thing and we will try the cases. And my partners do that. It goes to the, we have levels, right? If it's a bigger case, it goes to a certain partner. And then it doesn't matter where it is. Those partners are going to try those cases. And we take cases to trial. That's yeah. And that, and that leads very nicely onto my next, my next point. And I, I love that sort of teamwork and yeah, you're everywhere. And, you know, people should definitely just, just do a quick Google of your name. And some of the things that come up is just incredible. And talking of that in an interview with Wealth Insider magazine, you discuss a valuable life lesson. The great lawyers lose some trials because they risk taking on tough cases. So what do you mean explicitly by that? Well, I, I always, I've always believed that <clears throat> someone asked me last week, I had an interview last week, and they said, Fred, what is it you would, your whole life, what one thing would you take back? My answer was nothing, Rob, nothing. And why nothing? Because I learned from my failures. And I think that's the most important thing you learn with your failures. I, again, I, I'll say it again. I love the lawyers say, oh, I don't, I never lose. I always win. All right. Then makes it like you're taking the cupcakes. You know, every, everyone can do that. But but I think your failures are your most success are successful in life, right? Is what makes you successful. And and every little thing that I've done wrong or I've tripped on uh, or fallen down and gotten back up, I, I've learned from those lessons. And I always tell people this, and they always say, Well, you, it's easy for you, you've made it, right? No, I still haven't made it to me, right? Uh, the, the, the more you work and the more successful you become, the more people are going to try to knock you down and knock you off your horse. Right? So what I, what I say is it, it's just the, you just got to keep working hard. You just keep getting back up. And I always bring up the same story, Rob, and I'll bring it up again. I was in a small little high school and a young boy, I was speaking to this uh, juniors and seniors and he raised his hand and basically said to some extent, how is it you have become so successful? My dad has it. Right. And the answer is, I, I don't really know your dad, but maybe I got off the ground more times than he did. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. And it's, it's so true. And you, you talk about that because when, you know, you reach, you know, you, you have achieved so much, Fred, you've been featured in Forbes, you've done so many amazing things, but you, you'd speak very openly, you know, new level, new devil, you know, you get to the top points and, you know, people are coming for you and you've got to stay where you are. And my grandfather's my greatest mentor. And he said, anyone can be successful. It's far harder to stay successful. And so, you know, it's, it's so, yeah. so true. And, you know, you've been a mentor, you know, we've connected through the world of social audio on platforms like Clubhouse. And I'm immensely grateful for that because, you know, getting, getting access to people like you is just incredible my learning. And one thing that really stuck with me, and I really, really hope you can just shed a little bit of light on this story, is when I say these three words and you connect the story, you'll know what I'm going to. Resist, resist, resist. Can you explain to our listeners why I've mentioned that and tell us your little story around that? That's my mantra. So as I, again, I grew up with very little and it was easy for me to have little. Right, Rob? So what happens is when you become successful, what most people do is they got to spend their money. And what I did is I was married, and I still am married to the same wonderful woman uh, for 37 years. Ah, oh, congratulations. Um, yeah, and, I, and that's another story about marrying a solution, not a problem. I married a solution, not a problem. And and so what, what happened is I became successful. After about four years, Rob, I was booming. It was really taken off, and the money started coming in. And I lived in a small home, um, you know, I think it was maybe 1,900 square feet in a middle normal suburb, drove just a normal car, had a BMW, but it wasn't a, a super fancy one. And all my friends were buying Ferraris, building, not all, but a lot of them, Ferraris, building the mansions. And I said to myself, you know what? I, I'm going to invest in other companies and invest in my law firm, right? So at that point, I said to myself, my entrepreneurial said to my, uh, self said, you've got to expand, but you have to diversify. So at that point, I started diversifying. I started buying, going into real estate, uh, other types of businesses, publishing, uh, radio, whatever. I started investing in building and buying other companies. And Rob, a lot of people do that. And they say, okay, I'm going to do that for a year or two. 
Rob, I did that for 10 years. I stayed in that humble little home. I paid it off. I had paid all my everything off. I, had, I, I don't remember having any debt. I might have had a little, but I don't remember it. And I just built companies, other companies outside the law firm and continued to build the law firm with the money that I was making instead of spending it on the new Lamborghini, the Ferrari, the, the big mansion home. And don't get me wrong, after 10 years, I did build a nice, beautiful home on, on large acreage out in California, which is, that's what's worth the money, acreage in California. So, uh, but it took 10 years until I finally said, maybe I can splurge on myself a little yeah. bit, right? Maybe I can splurge, but 10 years, not one, not two, not three, 10 years living in that this simple very humble home. And uh, I, I, it's, it's like, the, what do they say? The millionaire next door, yeah. right? And, and that's how I've done it. And so when, when the economy does this, one of your other businesses is always up, you know. And the law firm's always, by the way, done well. We've always, we've had no issues with spikes up or down. We've been pretty much like this the yeah. whole time. Uh, in fact, during the pandemic, we didn't, we didn't stop. Mm. We were still full tilt. No, and it's so. it. But that's how like, resist, 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 resist. And I, I love that story. And yeah, and it's, it's amazing what you've achieved. And you touched on radio and that leads nicely onto what I was next going to say. So in addition to everything you get up to, Frederick, you're also the host of Radio Law Talk. So a radio show reflecting on the current legal issues. So would you mind telling us more about it? Yeah. So, you know, me and Rob, we're the same and you're you're a mastermind when it comes to marketing and, and you understand marketing uh, as well or as better than most. Um, I, 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 you have to continue to market yourself, Rob. That's the problem is you get comfortable. It's easy for me, Rob. I could shut everything down and just sit back on what I've got and build and, and I'm fine. Right. I could have retired 15 years ago, but you, you can't, you got to keep pushing and you've got to be into marketing, social media, radio, television, whatever you want to do, but just market yourself. And, and I'm telling you, as, as arrogant as this sounds, everything that goes out of this office or my any other place has my name on it. Everything. I don't care if it's a if it's a an apple or it's a chair or it's a jet or it's a car or it's a race car. It's got my name on it. And, I, and with that mantra and that belief, I, I I I came together with one of the top producers, a guy by the name of Cal Hunter. Three-time Emmy nominated, but never a winner. He never won. We always remind <laughs> you that. Um, and, and, and believe it, it's not Emmys. They, they have Emmys in each state. They, people don't realize this. You get an Emmy in every state. They they do the national ones. They do the state. But he was a California Emmy awarded, well-known guy. Um, and I said, and he and I said, God, what, we need to do a radio show and about law. And not only about law, but make it entertaining, exciting, and sometimes informative. And so we said, hey, that's our, that's what we're going to call it. Radio Law Talk, um, the most exciting, entertaining, and only sometimes informative show on earth. And it's kind of funny. We make it funny like that. And whatever's the latest trends, we kind of we tweak them and laugh about them and have a good time. And we started that five years ago. And I said, you know what? Um, I'm, I'm going to go all out. I built a studio, Rob. I didn't just go out and start a little podcast. It was like we built a full-blown studio with two – with the control room and everything. So it's close by me. So I, I don't have to travel. Right. And we started off, we were terrible and it has now grown to, again, I don't know of anyone that's bigger than us other than one law law program in the United States. And we're, I believe over a hundred radio stations carry us now trying to get to 250 is our goal. Um, so, uh, and, and that's, that's pretty big. We're big like Mississippi, you know, Georgia, I mean, all these states all over the United States where we just, New York, someone just picked us up in New York, a, a, a station out of New York. I think we're already in New York anyway. Um, but that has just taken off. It is boom, Rob. It has become a well-known nationally syndicated show live, nine to noon Pacific time. And then they'll, they'll re, some of them replay it other times. And then it, and then it, we add that as a podcast. So it's also a podcast. And so you can go to our website, radiolawtalk.com. Click on our shows. You can click on any of the dates and it's made into a podcast. And you can even search. This is what's so cool. You could type in Johnny Depp and it'll show all the, the, the dates and the times we talked about Johnny Depp. So really cool. And, and we do it every week. And, and that's why it's a nonstop life for me, right? That's I work five days at the office and then I'm on the radio the sixth day 
and Sunday is about the only day I have. Yeah, and I just love your passion, Frederick, in terms of everything you say. And I love that, you know, you, you say about marketing because you're right. You could do boots up. You could just not, you don't need to market, but you understand the importance of it in this era. And, you know, the best known beats the best nowadays. You know, that marketing being visible, because if you're not visible, you're invisible in this era that we're moving to. And you're everywhere. And look, there's proof in the pudding. You're very active on social media. You have 1.2 million followers on Instagram. Yes, I just said that folks listening 1.2 million followers on instagram you've recently embraced the likes of tiktok so how do you use social media platforms and how do you hope to educate your viewers potentially around personal injury and the law within that so probably the uh, largest one of the largest lawyer magazines is called super lawyer magazine very prestigious lawyer uh, a magazine nationwide so they just interviewed me uh, on an article the next magazine coming out about wow how have you taken off social media Everyone thinks, oh, it's easy. You just buy this. You buy that. That, is, that is so wrong. That's not all of it. There's a little bit of that, but not – you have to – I tell people, if you are in social media, it is a nonstop job. I mean, I, Rob, I see you, and I'm at 5 a.m. in the morning, 4.30, sometimes a.m., and I'm, I see you popping up because you're across the pond, and I'm, I'm listening to what you're doing or watching what you're doing. And I'm, I'm typing and I'm commenting and I'm, I'm posting and, and it's a nonstop job. People think it's easy. And I know you can hire someone to help do that. And I get that. And to some degree, that's okay. But it's still you, mm. right? It's still me. And I've got to make sure it's done right, right? And I've got to be careful. So I've always thought um, that you have to advertise and build your brand. Even back to the days of Yellow Pages, Rob, I was one of those guys on the back cover of the Yellow Pages, right? And that was another investment, by the way. I, I bought into and owned Yellow Page companies in the States. And then I flipped them and sold them right before Yellow Pages went down and the internet went up. So it worked out perfect. But I always believe that that's what you need to do. And, and social media is the same way. Social media is the future. Everyone thinks, hey, throw up a billboard and I am on a few billboards, but that's another story itself. But uh, you can do all you want with billboards, even television ads. It's the social media because people are looking at social yeah. media and they're going to look you up. And I don't care if you've got an ad, 1-800-FRED-PENNY, you know, they're still going to look you up. And and most people are looking at their social media yeah. now, right? Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. So what I've done is this. I'm not as big on TikTok as you think I am. I'm fairly good, good size. But my two boys that are lawyers in the firm are big TikTokers. My son is a verified TikToker, um, and, but he's a lawyer. So I say, boys, you do the TikTok. I'll do the Instagram and the Facebook, yep. right? So we divide it up because the TikTok's the younger generation, yep. right? And, and uh, even though old guys like me are still on it. So that's kind of how we, we've broken it up in our firm. But I have a lot of law firms and lawyers call me, Rob, all the time about how do you do it, Fred? What, should I get into it? And, and they're just now thinking about yeah. it, Rob. I mean, you're the kind of guy that are out. You're, you're the guy they need to listen to that will go out and show them, guys, this is what you need to do. And But they call me and I'm like, I, I'm not a marketing guy. I'm not going to do it for you. But I'll tell you in general, you just got to yeah. get going. Do you have an Instagram? Do you have a TikTok? Do you have a, a Facebook page? No. Mm. But it comes down to, Rob, what do you build first? I think you've heard me say this. You build the name first, the business second. And everyone's like, oh, then how do you write it up? It is a business write-up because you're building your business. But I build the name Frederick Penny first, which means Penny and Associates and any other businesses I'm doing, it falls down the line to that, Right. You know I'm a lawyer, Rob, right? You know I do personal injury. Most people on the, the app or any app knows that. Most of them do. So that's what I do. I build my name first, uh, and then it all flows down to whatever business you have, which is a law firm. Hence, the jet. Everyone thinks, okay, it's stupid. It's arrogant. I, I Grant Cardone's got his name on the tail. So on the tail of my jet, I was just on the jet yesterday. I was flying, doing some business in different states, and – that, that name is as big as it can be on the tail of my jet. And I don't care what people think. People think, oh, that's arrogant. That's, no, you're stupid to do that. I'm building the business. And, you know, when they know when we fly, we fly in or roll into Van Nuys, L.A., whatever, it's Penny & Associates jet. And guess what? People are going to see the name, right? 
And yeah, and absolutely. And, and you cool. earn the right as well. And you know, everything you've done and you talk so much sense, particularly as that, you know, you being the, 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 the forefront, that personal brand, that, you know, that beacon, that lead magnet, if you like, cause that just brings everything through. And I just, you're talking my language so much for it and you've just achieved so much. So it's just fantastic. And I'm glad we touched on the jet. So I was going to talk to you about that because we moved from peaches to the private jet and it's awesome that you have that. But I also want to talk about race cars because you mentioned you've also been nicknamed the super lawyer. Um, you are one of the first lawyers i believe to sponsor race cars so where did your interest stem from there and why did you want to invest in racing yeah no i don't think i'm the first lawyer that 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 advertised on a race car i'm the first lawyer at least that i know of that well let me back up I, at least that, that i i bought built uh companies around racing so penny racing supply was started 24 years ago and it, we supplied race cars with parts engines, all that type of stuff. We started a big warehouse. I brought in the top people, built that. Then we bought a company called CompTech Race Engines that won the Indy 500 in 2001. <clears throat> and so I bought or built all these racing companies, Pacific Challenge Series, which is a racing series in the West Coast that, that had all come together and I put my name on everything. So every single race car that raced in the Pacific Challenge Series, say there's 40 cars showing up to race. Every car had to have Penny Associate injury lawyer's name on it. And racetracks had to talk about me. And and people all, all thought I was the stupidest guy. Why would you do that? Racing, there's no money. They're right. There's no money in racing. Yeah, they always say if you want to make a million, two, three million in racing, put up five or six million, yeah. right? And so, um, and, and that's kind of what I did. And, and it built my name out there. Uh, Rob, it was all over the Western United States, even su to some degree to the East Coast when they'd race out of the East Coast, but mainly in the Western United States. Build Penny and Associates, build Frederick Penny's name. I just just now, uh, as of a uh, day before yesterday, a well-known racer was racing in a huge race uh, out in I think he's in Indianapolis, and um, I said, "Don't go on it. I'm not following the Instagram." And I texted him personally. I DM. Here's a top race car driver. Hey, we don't follow each other, and he. Right back. Oh, Fred, man, how are you doing? This guy's one of the top <laughs> race car drivers in the state. Wow. You know? I mean, they know who I am, right? And so I've gotten referrals from that. So I built off that. And sadly, or not sadly, my wife's happy about this. We sold the, all company, all racing companies in 2019, completely out of it. But it built what I wanted to build. It, it built me from nothing. It vaulted me. It helped vault me to where I am. Or And it's still, I still get people calling me from racing yeah. industry to still hook up with me. It, right? So it's it doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter. It's, Build the name. it's incredible. And, you know, I think sometimes the word inspiring is overused in modern day society. But, you know, this is super inspiring, Frederick. Everything you've done, everything you've achieved from starting out with entrepreneurial life to, you know, the law firm, what you've done. And, you know, we have an aspiring legal community that listens into the show and they may just be thinking, this is light years away from me. How, you know, what advice do you give to aspiring attorneys who want to make a name for themselves or maybe have an interest in personal injury? Because you didn't even have an interest in personal injury. So what's that key piece of advice you're going to say to talk to those people? Great, great question, Rob. And this is what I want to say. And I'm always very careful around this. I tiptoe around this subject. Let me tell you why. What do you hear out there all over the world? Hey, I can get you rich quick. Let me tell you how to get rich quick. This is how you do it. Rob, some can, some do it, but the majority of time, it's the long haul, Rob. And look at me 30, 35 years, 30 years later after law from 35 years after kind of start entrepreneurial stuff. It takes time, Rob. It's okay to take your time. Don't rush it is what I tell these young lawyers. Don't try to be the superstar, millionaire, multi-billionaire within two years. You know, oh, well, this person says we can really do it and you can do it in this. I always tell people when they come in to try to invest, you know, hey, Fred, will you put some money in my company? Which, by the way, I've always said this. I can never think other than a bank here and there. I've never taken anyone's money to invest in my business. I do it all myself because I don't want to be beholden to people. Right. And so as an entrepreneur lawyer, when you're young, you have to be patient, Ron. It's about patience. Build. You don't have to build slow. You can still build fast. But don't don't worry about becoming a millionaire in two, three years. It could be 10 years. It could be five years. It could be 15 years. It takes time to build a strong business. 
Don't get me wrong. Sometimes people do it quickly. But Rob, you know what the problem is? That's what we see out in the news. That's what we hear about is the ones that just hit it really big, really fast. Crypto, you know, all that type of stuff. And I'm, I'm okay with that. Some people have, but I don't get it. And I'm a long haul person. And so it's okay to do it quick, but don't be impatient and don't be upset if you're not going to build immediately that it's going to take time. Time is the best part of building the business, in my opinion, because they're stronger. I, I say it's just a stronger foundation. So there it is. There's the answer. Don't worry about it. Keep working. Keep getting up. Keep working hard. But you know it's going to take some time and allow it to take time. Sometimes 10 years, Bob. 10 and years. it's such important advice, Frederick, because you're so true, because we live in a society now of instant gratification and we people see things on social media and they expect, well, I've been doing this for a few weeks now. I should be getting this return. I should be getting that return. And I always say to people, you know, you've got to run your own race at your own pace and, you know, surround yourself. You know, proximity is power. You know, there's no surprising, you know, I want people like you in my network, Frederick, right? I can learn from you. You know, you can, you can mentor people like us. And, you know, if you you surround yourself by good people. You surround yourself by five millionaires. The likely is you're going to be the sixth. But you've got to enjoy the journey. You can't just compare yourself to what you see on all of these digital outlets and think, oh, maybe I can't get there. Because you can. Just enjoy the journey. Accept there's going to be knockbacks. Accept there's going to be some learnings along the way. But like you said to that child about their dad, maybe you just got off your butt a little bit more than somebody else. And that's the reality, folks. You know, the people that are successful, they just have a relentless will to win. They will never, ever give up. And uh, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the show, Frederick. And for our listeners, finally, if they want to learn more about personal injury or the radio law talk, where can they find out more? I always say go to my Instagram at Frederick, F-R-E-D-E-R-I-C-K, P-E-N-N-E-Y, and the number one. That's my Instagram. I follow, I, as you know, Rob, I, I'm there on there all the time. Radiolawtalk.com. It'll, you can follow that and pennyandassociates.com in the States. Um, there's, there's multiple other social medias that I, uh, uh, platforms that I'm on and I, I deal with, but uh, go to those three and that, and then you'll find me. You can, you can Google Frederick Penny. You'll find me everywhere, everywhere. Not to be bragging and, oh, I'm everywhere, but that's just Google my name and you'll find, find my stuff. Unfortunately or fortunately. Definitely fortunately. And we'll also make sure we share this, uh, all those handles with this episode for you too, Frederick. So that just leads me to say thank you ever so much. It's been a real honor hosting you today on the Legally Speaking podcast. It's been a and I'm going to interrupt you, Rob. I'm going to interrupt you. Resist, resist, resist. <laughs> yes, so true. So true. It's such a good lasting message. But we'd just like to wish you lots of continued success by your own words. You still want to get going, right? You still more you want to achieve, the still more you right. want to do. So absolute pleasure. Thoroughly enjoyed it. I'm sure our listeners will. But from all of us on the Legally Speaking Podcast for now, over and out. This week's review comes from Anjali Menon. Five stars. Great podcast. Every episode's managed to be informative and engaging. Keep up the great work. Anjali, thank you so much from all of us on the Legally Speaking podcast for your super kind words and encouragement. Thanks a million. <laughs>